We will start by defining the domain of the boundary value problem. In this case, that's the fluid region surrounding the cylinder. With Workbench open, start by dragging Fluid Flow Fluent into the project schematic. Rename it Cylinder RE equals 20 to help with organization. If it's not already open on the right, right click Geometry and select Properties to bring up the Properties panel. Change the Analysis Type to 2D. This tells the solver that the governing equations will be the 2D conservation equations. Next, double click on Geometry to open Discovery. Once Discovery has opened, Click on the menu icon on the top left and select Settings. Go to Units and Display Precision, and if it has not already been modified, change Length to Meters and Minor Grid Spacing to 0.1 meters. This is more appropriate for the scale of the geometry we will be creating. Next, select the Sketch tool if it's not already been selected. Click on the Z axis so we know we are sketching on the correct plane, and press the V hotkey on the keyboard to orient the view to be facing this plane. Next, select the circle tool and hover over the origin. You should see a small green circle appear, showing that you're selecting the desired point. Left click, and then move your cursor outwards to create the circle. From here, before clicking again, press tab, on your keyboard and type 1 and click enter. This should create a circle with a diameter of 1 meter. The domain of our boundary value problem is the flow area around the cylinder, so we need to create a larger circle to define the outer boundary. Using the circle tool again, select the origin and drag outwards. While we can dimension this as before, we can alternatively create a circle of arbitrary size and constrain the dimensions afterwards. Left click anywhere outside the first circle and click the dimension tool. Select the outer circle and then click anywhere. This constrains the dimensions of the circle by its diameter. We can then double click on the dimension to edit it and set it to 64 meters. We can zoom out to see the full domain, and we can see that we've created an outer circle of 64 meters. Click Escape to close the dimension tool, and then by selecting 3D mode, we can see that we've now created the annular flow domain. To help control the mesh, we want to add a vertical line that bisects the created geometry. To do this, select the Sketch tool to start a new sketch. Select the Z-axis as before to ensure we're sketching in the correct plane, and press V on your keyboard in case your view gets messed up. This time, select the Line tool and hover over the outer circle. It should turn yellow to indicate that you're on top of it. Move your cursor towards the top of the circle while staying on the line and a green triangle should appear. This indicates that you're at the top point of the circle. Left click to start the line and repeat this process to select the bottom point of the circle. Press escape to close the line tool and zoom in. We can see that this line currently extends across the circle area representing the cylinder in the center of the geometry. To remove this, select the Split Curve tool, click on the vertical line, and then click on the interior circle. This should cut out the intersection of the line. We can then right-click this and delete to remove it. If we then zoom out and return to 3D mode, looking to the left side, we can now see the surface and curves we created. If we hide the curves, however, 
we will see that the surface was unchanged by adding the new sketch. Making sure the curves are visible, we can add these lines to the surface using the Project tool. First, select the vertical lines by holding the Control key and left-clicking both of them. Next, select the Receiving Surface option and select the surface. Press the check mark to complete the operation. This projects the vertical lines we created onto the surface. We can see this by hiding the vertical lines. We only need the surface to perform the simulations, so we can suppress the vertical lines by right clicking and selecting Exclude from Simulation. Make sure to hit Escape to close the project tool. The Fluent interface does not allow us to click on boundaries to apply the desired boundary conditions. This means we need to set up the locations on which these conditions will be applied now. We can do this using name selections. Start by selecting the Named Selection tool on the bottom right of the Discovery interface. First, select the left outer semicircular edge. Select New and name it Farfield 1. We can do the same thing on the right edge and name it Farfield 2. Next, we can zoom in, hold Control to select both of the inner edges, and name them Cylinder Wall. Finally, it is helpful to zoom out and select both surfaces and name them Flow Domain. This creates selectable options for all of the relevant components of the geometry. With the geometry completed, we can close Discovery. Back in the Workbench interface, we can save the project in the desired location. Give it a useful name. Next, we'll work on creating the mesh.